all right folks what is going on this is episode 469 of the first and frame rate show i am vf baller over here we talk about george southern and atlanta falcons football and today we're going to jump back into george southern football I, I talked a lot about the falcons they're doing a phenomenal job of making some roster moves some trades looking forward to the future and just building a culture where guys possibly want to be in atlanta because of the money and the coaching and just the environment they look like they're, they're building something really nice year two of coach Arthur smith and he's making things happen terry fano year two of him making things happen you really can't knock what they're doing right now but we're going to talk about some georgia southern football as they have a game against south alabama the six and two south alabama jaguars and this may be a really tough game for georgia southern because i've been looking at what's going on with south alabama and it's really hard to figure them out it's really hard to figure out what they're trying to do but we're going to try to make some sense of it and talk about some players that they have and talk about what we can do to make things, you know, a little bit easier for George Southern at Paulson and see if we can get this W. If it's your first time here, welcome. I can be found on YouTube and Rumble. I'm also on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. All the links are down in the description if you want to support. I'm also opening up a Locals if you don't know anything about Locals. Um, you can look it up. I'm not going to put the link out there yet because there's nothing there. I want to have it up and running by Monday, but I'll probably have the link up at the end of the week. So you guys can go over there. I'll probably have a couple things posted. We'll talk about some things on that end, but, uh, we will get into all of that at a later time. Let's get into this right here. Georgia, Georgia Southern goes up against the South Alabama Jaguars. These guys are six and two. They had a pretty good, you know, um, uh, season so far uh, i want to give you a quick rundown of what we're looking at here when um george southern hosts south alabama um south alabama is like i said they're six and two the full schedule if you look at what they've done this season so far they have uh beat up on a few teams they lost by one point to ucla at ucla very close of winning that game and uh really really unfortunate that the Sun Belt couldn't continue to show their strength by beating UCLA because uh, around that time you know Georgia Southern beat Nebraska and you know Texas A&M went down to Appalachia State and Marshall did their thing against Notre Dame you know South Alabama around that time would have continued to show what they can do but when you look at what they've done for the season between that and the Troy game those are the only two games that they lost. Now, Troy looks really good in the Sun Belt West. And it looked like they're going to be running away with that division overall um, at 5-2. and two. They're looking pretty good. But when you look at what South Alabama has done, the wins that they have are from fairly, you know, okay teams. Um, I, I'm, I'm not really reading this team very well when it comes to are they really that good or they're just beating up on a bunch of, you know, lower end teams because they beat Nichols 48 to seven. They did beat central Michigan 34 to 28, which is fairly impressive. Then they turned around and lost to UCLA by one, but look at the rest of the games that they played. They played against Louisiana tech, Louisiana, UL, um, UL, um, Monroe. I don't know why I got tongue tied there. UL, um, Monroe. So, they went through the city, I mean, went through the uh, state of Louisiana and just beat up on all their teams. And, like, the only ones they haven't really touched was uh, Tulane and uh, uh, LSU. <laughs> but, you know, so they went through Louisiana. But after leaving the state of Louisiana, they end up losing to Troy, but they turned back around and beat Arkansas State 31-13. Uh, when you look at what this team has done, they look like they're going to be a prominent, uh, a prominent and respectable opponent for Georgia Southern. But looking at the teams that they face, I don't think they face a team like Georgia Southern. Now, that doesn't – I, I want to get hyped up about that because Georgia Southern can do very well if they, you know, basically don't turn the ball over. Georgia Southern can do really well. But South Alabama is 6-2 for a reason. So this is why I can't really – I don't know how to read this. You know, I'm, I'm kind of – I don't know what to read on this team. As of right now – um south alabama is somewhat of a favorite four point spread which that don't really mean nothing i mean as far as i'm concerned uh it's almost a push game pick me uh and with george southern being at home and the matchup predictor for espn has us winning you know 53 percent to 47 so 
I don't know what that ESPN uh, analytics uh, it really entails, but at the end of the day, I think Georgia Southern has a very good chance of winning this game. It's just that I don't know much about South Alabama because even though I looked at a few games uh, that they played, not all of them, but a few games, uh, not all the games, but a few games here and there, I just don't know what to make of this team. You have a quarterback in, uh, in uh, oh goodness, I forgot his first name just that quick, Carter Bradley, that just, you know, looks pretty solid. He looks pretty solid. I you know, much to say about that. You know, um, 14 touchdowns and five interceptions. You also have, uh, what's his name, Ladarius we Ladamian Webb, who's actually been running the ball pretty well. Jalen Wayne, wide receiver. And uh, James Miller at linebacker. Now, I, this is the thing I want to do. I don't want to talk about the offense just yet. I want to talk about South Alabama defense because their defense is going to, you know, pretty much dictate well, the way we react to their defense is going to dictate how this game goes. If we can be able to put up points on this defense, it's going to be a long day for South Alabama. Because I, I just don't think, I don't think any team in the Sun Belt could really go, you know, continuously go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Georgia Southern as far as um, outscoring us. I don't I don't think there's no team that can do it. Now, the only thing we have to do to not, you know, deal, to not uh, have a problem with that, we can't just turn the ball over. I mean, all the other teams that we had, we basically was outscoring them like crazy, but we end up turning the ball over here or there, and it just doesn't work out for us. So if we are really, you know, we protect the ball, we play what we ha play the way we do. Um, I think that their defense is not going to, you know, show up to to take on a task of, you know, beating up on our Georgia Southern Eagles. So let's look at their defense. James Miller is their leading tackler. Now he has a total of forty four tackles, twenty four of them solo. 20 of them are assisted. Their other linebacker, Trey Kaiser, has 29 tackles um, solo, 12 assisted for a total of 41. And you also have another linebacker that they have, Keyshawn Brown, with 18 tackles, 11 assisted for a total of 29. Their linebackers is going to be, uh, I'm not going to say they're going to be a problem, but this is something that we may want to try to uh, deal with when it comes to our offense. These linebackers, like they can get around a little bit. Um, look like they can, you know, stretch, you know, go sideline to sideline, and it could cause problems for our running game. Now, that's one thing I, I'm worried about is the running game because you got linebackers like this, and you also have a defensive lineman who's already has four sacks on the season. You have another guy with CJ Rice has three sacks on the season. So Jamie Sarris had the four four sacks. CJ Rice has three. Quai Davis, I mean. I said that completely wrong. Wachevius Thompson has three sacks as well. So you got three guys that are either playing a linebacker or on a defensive line that are actually putting pressure on the quarterback. Now, our offensive line is pretty good. I think our offensive line is pretty stout. We should be okay doing something against this team, but you can't overlook what they have. And also, this safety that they have, Yam Banks, he has a total of 19 solo tackles, eight assisted, 27 um, total tackles, five pass defenses, four interceptions. This is a guy that you may want to watch out for. Uh, we like to pass the ball a lot, so that's that. That's pretty much going to be the concern for us. The running game, I think we'll be able to do something with the running game, even with these guys in their in their. Uh, Front seven, but that safety, that's one guy I'm going to be worried about. The rest of their cornerbacks, they're they're, they're not too shabby themselves. You have uh, Liddell Luther Jr., five pass defenses for or five pass defenses for one interception. You also have DeSager Jr., who's a linebacker who has an interception as well. So you got some guys on this defense is actually pretty stout. But like I said, I don't know how to, you know, really – read this team because they played a lot of teams that i'm you know outside of the ucla game they're playing a lot of teams that are i'm gonna be quite honest they're pretty inferior this year arkansas state ulm uh louisiana monroe you know so i'm gonna say louisiana monroe ul and L louisiana tech the only team that's formidable that i see that they had trouble with was ucla and troy and they lost to troy and they lost to ucla now the UCLA game is a little different story, but against Troy, they was only be able to put up six points. Now, can our defense do something about that? I don't know. Our defense has not been the best, 
but I feel like we can make prominent stops at certain times to slow down this deep, this uh, offense. Now, the offense themselves, they put up 31.6 points a game. You know, they only allow 17 points, so something's going to have to give. I think that we're going to score more than 17. I'd be highly surprised that we don't score more than 17 at Paulson. Also, another thing about the South Alabama Jaguars, they only give up six, uh, 86 yards a game rushing. That's going to be a test to see if we can run the ball. Now, we also had an issue with running um, when we played against uh, James Madison. We was able to do some things, you know, with a team that really didn't, you know, allow too much rushing. Same thing with Old Dominion. They didn't allow much rushing. They didn't allow much pass, but we was able to do some things, especially in the running game with Old Dominion. So maybe we can find a way to uh, basically keep these guys honest by running the ball. I think if we do that, and I, I think we're well capable of doing it, we should be fine. Now, running the ball on their side, you know, Damian Webb is no is, is no slouch. Dude already have over 640 yards, nine touchdowns. Carries and um, yards is very and touchdowns are very similar to uh, Jalen White. Now, I don't know who that backup running back is, but it's going to be very hard for this defense to kind of game plan for both running backs when you look at uh, Gerald Green come in and probably make some things happen. And even though we did lose – uh, Amari Jones, we still got a handful of receivers that can make some things happen. We got a good bit of them that can make some things happen. So when we stretch out this defense, we're really going to see what this uh this uh Georgia, not Georgia, but South Alabama Jaguar defense is all about. Because we go four or five wide, or we go four wide with one in the backfield, it's going to be interesting to see if they can slow that down, then it could be a long day for the Eagles. I, I expect Kyle Van Trees to have an efficient game once again. They're not. They're probably going to try to play it safe unless they see something that they like, and they'll let Van Trees rip for another 500, 400, maybe 300 yard game. But from what I see here, I would not be surprised if you see somewhat of the same type of game plan that they had against Old Dominion. It worked, and for the most part, the Georgia Southern uh, offense looked pretty efficient and balanced. And to be honest, that's what I would like to see. I, 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 you know, as long as it's working, I'm, I'm okay with it. If you just pass all day or run all day, but I would like to see more of a balanced attack to keep the defense honest and on their toes. And I think that for the most part, George Southern should be able to do that. Um, Jalen White should be able to have a pretty decent game. Now, what I will say is, they do have that one safety back there, and they got a cornerback that's so so. I don't think these guys could cover every type of uh, guy that we have on the field that's a uh, pass catcher. I don't think they can. I mean, you still haven't talked about a couple of tight ends that we still have on the roster that are more than capable of making things happen with the ball. You know, you still got guys that, that can catch out the backfield on, out, out, you know, on our team. Jalen White can catch out the backfield. OJ Arnold's another one that can catch out the backfield. You know, Gerald Green, you just give him the ball and he can go. So with this preview, I want to say this. Georgia Southern, they know better than I do. I'm just a guy that's behind the microphone and in front of the camera. But from what I see, Georgia Southern has opportunities. They have opportunities to make some things happen with uh, this team, with, with the South Alabama Jaguars this upcoming Saturday. They're just going to have to continue to execute, stop the big plays, uh, and actually keep these guys in check on defense. If you do that, I mean, it's almost like really easy to say, but when you look at what's going on, when you look at what's going on on this team, you got linebackers on this team that actually needs to be kept in check. They got to be honest because South Alabama Jaguars, their linebackers look pretty good. They actually have a, a, a pretty decent pass rusher as well. And like I said, I think our offensive line has been doing a phenomenal job all season. I think they will continue to do so. They managed to stymie old Dominion, which had the best pass rush in the country. So I think you know, South Alabama will probably, you know, try, but I think we can hold them at bay. Also, we owe them, you know, we owe them a butt kicking from last year because they beat us badly last year in Mobile, Alabama. So that's going to be real interesting to see if they're going to be able to overcome that. And Kyle Van Trees and company can have ice water in their veins and move the ball and score some points and keep this team, you know, uh, still fighting for their, uh, lives in the west division of the Sun Belt. it's gonna be pretty interesting i think it's gonna be a really good game um probably the best game in the Sun Belt, to be honest with you because I, I don't know about the other games but 
these two teams here, six and two and five and three. It's going to be a real good one to watch. So hopefully you guys will check it out and uh, we'll talk about the game post game later on in the weekend. If you like this commentary, hit the like button, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I just talked about a few things when it comes to George Southern versus South Alabama. The preview of that game, that'll be at four o'clock uh, Eastern time, which uh, I want to say, yeah, that's four o'clock Eastern time. We're at home. I, I don't know why I thought we was away, but four o'clock Eastern time, you guys can check it out. We're going to be playing at Paulson. Hopefully that helps. The power of Paulson is something real. These guys play up to the task when they're at home and it, it just never fails. Hopefully we can get some get back. So y'all guys let me know. All right, y'all. I'm going to get up out of here. Y'all be blessed. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. See you on the next one. All right, y'all. Peace.